What's up guys, the Strong Boys 19 here, and this is going to be another new album ranking video in this segment. I'm going to be doing the album ranking from the world's biggest band in metal history, Metallica. Since that I have reviewed all of their albums from the previous month, from the debut album, all the way up to recently with the brand new album, I have decided for myself to rank these albums in my own personal opinion and this actual list for me has been very separate and as diverse as possible and maybe yet controversial to some audiences who will be watching this list but hey at the end of the day this is just what I think and if you want to make an album list of Metallica's discography of your own please put it down in the comments section below. And with that being said, let's dive into it. Number 11, my least favorite Metallica album is Reload. The reason why this album is at the bottom of the list, it is directly because that this album did not deliver the most great and optimistic expression of material that the rest of the albums before and after have done that even more successfully. The album does suffer with containing some of the band's worst songs, like Carpe Diem Baby to Bad Seed, some of the other filler tracks like Devil's Dance, which is really mediocre, and Attitude. But I still think this is a good album, as I give it an above average review and rating scale. It does credit some of the later tracks I do love to listen to, like Fuel, The Memory Remains, Where the Wild Things Are, Fixer, Slither, and the standout single of The Unforgiven 2. It is also the worst Metallica album in terms of the least amount of listening approaches. Hence, that's why this album from the discography had to be placed at the bottom of this album ranking. Number 10. This is going to, dare I say it, anger a lot of the people. But if you guys love this record and see it as one of your favourites, that is great. No problems whatsoever. But I have my reasons why. Number 10 is Death Magnetic. This is still, to me, a really good album. But I do not see this album at all as one of the best comeback albums of all time and there are tracks to this record which are still as amazing and full of this thrashathon and exciting material like that was just your life to all nightmare long broken beat and scarred my apocalypse and the day that never comes some of the tracks could do without with my experience because they were not memorable and they can be forgettable. Obviously, the worst excuse about this album is the horrendous, awful, and disgusting production and mixing. I can't stand it. But I still really enjoy this album very much, despite the flaws. So this album has got a lot of the merit, but yet alone, I don't see this album at all into the higher favoritism like I have with the albums that are ranked higher in this list. Number nine is Hardwired to Self-Destruct. The Metallica album, in terms of the later ones in their catalogue, that I do prefer actually way better and really like more than the last album. There's a bit of this return of the variety, which I like very much, of this album's own identity. The combination of clean guitar moments, and especially for vocals, and the combination to that with, to me, some of the most underappreciated and awesome material. Really catchy and as exciting moments. Tracks like with the title track Hardwired, Atlas Rise, Halo on Fire, and Am I Savage to Spit Out the Bone, which is one of the best Metallica tracks ever. I'm not keen onto the mediocre song of Confusion, which is 
decent. However, I, I still think the weakest cut is Murder One. That song has its own emotional and dedicating purpose, which I give it a lot of the admiration for, but it's the way the song sounds. It was just plodding along with really subpar writing material, and it does not stand out as a lot of the album does, in my opinion. Also, can I point this out to me? This is the worst Metallica album cover. It is ugly, and I do hate it as potentially maybe one of the worst album covers. I really don't think this was a great idea. It's an atrocious design. But this album, besides some of its flaws, is one of the later favourable albums when I listen to Metallica's discography as a whole. Number 8. I know this album had just come out recently. This album, along with Hardwired, had been very difficult in the placement because I would have swapped these around, but I feel very satisfied on where this album has been positioned in this album ranking. Number 8 is 72 Seasons. I do understand that some people see this as a bit of a rehash and really predictable album without anything new and making comparisons of some of these tracks on this new album to the previous stuff and I agree but it does not take away the massive enjoyments that I love a lot about this album. What stands out for me are some of the tracks that deliver so strongly. I love some of the later tracks like Too Far Gone, Room of Mirrors, and also Chasing Light was a bit of a grower with me still, and Inamorata, which was the longest Metallica track that I do enjoy very, very much, and Sleepwalk My Life Away to the tight, epic opener that is the title track, 72 Seasons. This album features some of the returns of Hetfield's most moving, emotional, and dark, deep set of lyrics onto his depression and mental health and other struggles. He was very brave enough to cast out these struggles into art, pretty much for the first time in a long while since previous albums like Reload to Saint Anger and Load, etc. But I have been grown to become more of a big fan of this album, but it's not to me one of the top best Metallica albums, but I still think this album has delivered so much power in its emotions, and to me, one of the other really good and striking tones of the band themselves, with dual guitar epicness to even more melody from Hetfield's vocals. So, 72 Seasons, in my opinion, could potentially be my favourite later Metallica album, besides Hardwired Self-Destruct. Number 7 is Saint Anger. This is the main attraction into the worst album part of Metallica's discography, and if you still think this is their worst album, and one of the worst albums of all time. Again, there's no issues whatsoever. But the more I think about that, I don't see this album as the worst album in metal ever. This album had been made through a lot of the difficult crisis that we all know about, the confrontations between James and Lars happened, the relationship deteriorating, and the state of Metallica's own relevance to the audience and the general public had reached its turmoil. This is an album which was made for the band themselves, and what I actually love the most about this record, this is totally separate and the most different album than what you would expect to hear from Metallica, as Saint Anger was made throughout a lot of the difficulty and the chaos that was surrounding this record behind the scenes. And I also want to point this out, before I became a Metallica fan, I have loved the music videos and the sounds 
of frantic and sane anger when I was discovering metal music as a whole. But I originally hated this record when I was becoming a bigger fan of Metallica over time. I despised this record, but there were numerous times recently before reviewing this album that I wanted to give it a lot of the merit and with the best appreciation that I can give. This album is absolutely not perfect. I know some fans would see this as one of their most favourites and I agree with what the optimism and the reasons why Saint Anger had to be created. Not all of the songs to me are as strong as others. Invisible Kid to me is the worst Metallica song and I'm not a fan of the really average track of Shoot Me Again, but this album contains later tracks which I have been growing to accept and admire more, like Dirty Window, Sweet Amber, and the really pulverizing and agonizing song of Purify, and All Within My Hands. This is a record with its own emotional, destructive nature, and Saint Anger wouldn't have been made if the band would have decided to break up as permanently as possible. Say what you say about this album, but in my longest review of Saint Anger than any other Metallica album that I have reviewed, Saint Anger has been made into its own, I think, definitive purpose. So yeah, I have been growing myself to become a big fan of this album. Number six is The Black Album. This is the album which Metallica have been escalating up into the popularity and made the whole band stars. This album brought them stardom from its overall success and acclaim, and this has been one of the biggest selling albums of all time. However, this is to me not one of the classics, nor one of the greatest albums of all time. But... I think that this is still as a strong record. It's top-notch production for the first time done by Bob Rock is outstanding. The unstoppable, recognizable and great singles of Enter Sandman to Sad But True and one of the best ballads from the band of all time, Nothing Else Matters and some other stellar moments on songs like My Friend of Misery and Holier Than Thou. I'm not keen of the track of, of Wolf and Man, which is a good song, and I don't think The Struggle Within is that perfect of a closer, which was the disappointing moment for me when I listened to this album. Having said that, though, the Black Album is still an awesome release from Metallica for them being as open-minded and with the choices that they have made it's still as a very big and most important band moment, as the whole group themselves have switched positions in style and sound. One of these terrific and mostly consistent albums, especially throughout the metal scene of the 1990s. Number five is Load, my main favorite underrated Metallica album. There were moments in the times of listening to this band that I want to hear something as different and with a bit of variety, and this album won me over perfectly. I have the more attraction-driven feeling of this album because low to me is near perfect. The band to this point went into this less similar sound from the Black Album and move forward into the bluesy, psychedelic in places, hard rock driven material. I understand some people see some of the songs can be cheesy like Ain't My Bitch, which I don't care. I actually do love that different but very catchy song, 2x4 to the House Jack built, which did grow on me as massively. King Nothing to the Outlaw Torn, Bleeding Me, Until It Sleeps, Mama Said. These songs are some of my most favourite songs in Metallica's whole discography. 
The only song which to me is the weakest is Poor Twisted Me. It doesn't quite follow up what most of this album does for me. I know this is a really moody and darker yet personal aspect of what this album sounds like, especially through the depression from Hetfield. Personally, as he addressed a lot of this state from this album, Load for me is a high favourite in Metallica's discography, in my opinion. Number four is Kill Em All, a huge debut album that came at the right time. This was around the moment in the UK with the new wave of British heavy metal, from bands like with Iron Maiden to Judas Priest and Saxon, and the hair glam metal scene has become a dominating figure to this same moment, Hit the Lights, to Whiplash, Amnesia Pulling Teeth, and the outstanding Seek and Destroy. It's as almost a very near-perfect record. I love so much of the energy and the chaos of the speed and musicianship that this band had decided to put things together as massively as possible. Always a fun ride when I listen to this particular debut album, and along with the other debuts, like with Black Sabbath to Iron Maiden, this one is one of the top 10 metal debuts, and it's still as amazingly consistent and powerful with some stellar work in this material. Number three is And Justice For All. This is the darkest political and gruesome and heavily descriptive vibe in its own nature. Metallica to this point have been very technical and progressive at their most prolific one at that in inventive creativity despite the flaw of the production, but this album still delivers incredibly with the powerful constant bangers of One to Blackened, the title track of Unjustice for All, which is my favourite on the album, To Live Is To Die and Dio's Eve, their most aggressive sounding record yet in this last ever finale hurrah in the thrash days of Metallica. And also, this is my favourite album cover from Metallica's album covers, besides Ride the Lightning, A Master of Puppets, but And Justice For All has been one of these well-crafted and delivered albums that hits home with me in a very nostalgic way. It's intense, incredibly dominating, with some of the top-tier best quality. Number two is Ride the Lightning. Many Metallica fans alike would pick this album as their favourite, and I can see why. In terms of making a list of the best or favourite second albums to follow up a debut album, Ride the Lightning is one of these albums, in my opinion. You've got the thundering classic banger of the opener, Fight Fire with Fire, and as well as the punchiest, memorable hooks on songs like For Whom the Bell Tolls, and the progressive cinematic instrumental of The Call of Cthulhu, the moving ballad of Fade to Black. This entire album is where Metallica, for me, improves and gets better with musicianship as a band at the same time. This is a timeless follow-up album, and it could have been my favourite Metallica album, but there is one more album at the highest ranking. Number one, my favourite Metallica album of all time. It's very obvious, but I do defend that this is, to me, one of the pinnacle standout gems in any metal band's discography. Number one is Master of Puppets. This is the crowning achievement and the definitive form of Metallica. The lyrical contents are super relevant. The opening track of Battery, which is a dedication to the fans, with so much adrenaline, the drug addiction of Master of Puppets, 
And of course, with the mental insane institution of Welcome Home Sanitarium to the most beautiful instrumental from the band ever of Orion. What can we really address about Master of Puppets that has not been said? It is the favourite for me. It's a downright classic, like Ride the Lightning, but Master of Puppets is one of the greatest albums, not only in the 80s, but of all time in metal history. There you go, guys. That is my ranking of Metallica's discography with my own opinions, and you can make your list. Let me know what you think of my list in the comments down below. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll keep you guys posted for more videos in the near future.